Hey, right, so we got Thor L in the building. My guy. Before we uh before we get in get into all of this, man, so you you know you you reached out to me, you know, doing my live feed and you wanted to chop it up with me about a few things. And uh and I appreciate you reaching out. And we've been knowing each other, you know, well, we don't know each other like face to face or in person. But we we kind of been knowing each other yeah, socially. We've been, we, we been knowing each other, yeah, on the internet, on these internet trucking streets. Yeah, we've been knowing yeah, for about what five, six years now. Yeah, give or take. Yeah, it's been that. Yeah, it's been that long, bro. Yeah, exactly, exactly. It's about yeah, about five, six years. Shout out to Zello. All right, yeah, that's where we came. That's that's where we came from. But before we uh tip on Zello for a second, let's uh. Let's uh, start with your backstory, bruh. You know, what you was doing before trucking and uh and and what made you get into it. Okay. We're gonna start about uh two thousand seven. I was uh working as a security guard in uh in Philly. Before trucking, I was a security guard. Okay, okay. Sound like you were saying no, that you, you was Sound like you were saying you was a security guard up in Philly. So that's where you was born and raised at, up in Philadelphia? Yep. In West Philadelphia, born and raised on the playground is where I spent most of my days. Okay, okay. Okay. So so being a security guard, how long you was a security guard before, be, before you got into trucking? About two years. Two years, from 07 to 09. What 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 was uh some of the places that you was uh covering? Was you like was you like an armed security guard or was you like one of them like like what I used to do? I used to be a security guard, but I used to be like one of them sit down security guards watching an empty ass building. Something like that, yeah. I was uh I'd be working the booth uh like Tuesdays and Thursdays, then the weekend I'd be working I'd be working what's called the Rover, where I'm driving a little security car, and uh, I have a wand, which looks like a flashlight, but you touch it to these points on the buildings to basically show, hey, I've been here, I've been here, and they, they download it on Monday, and they can basically trace my steps throughout the complex. Was the what was the what was it occupied or was it was it empty? Uh, it was it was busy. Uh, it was called. I, they tore part of it down. It was called the Arsenal, Frankfurt Arsenal. So it was, um, I think it was like, I want to say it was like a 150 acre site. It was, it was pretty massive. It was pretty massive. They had uh, two police stations, two schools, a metal yard, several manufacturers. I mean, it was its own little town. Okay, that's what's up. Yeah, I used to be uh I, I used to well I, I, I call myself a rinky dink security guard. I, I wasn't like one of them serious cats that had the that had the uh the uh weapon and everything, even though I was certified, but you know, some of the places that they put me at, you know, really didn't require a gun and I and I refused to be a security guard for a bank. <laughs> you know, they they had uh they had some bank accounts that they needed uh that they needed security guards for and you know they was asking me well they got mad well that was one of the reasons why why I left because I refused to to do the fifth third account downtown and that was one of the banks that yeah. was notorious for getting robbed all the time and I'm over here like telling them like look man you know, the first person that's going to be on the on the bullseye is the security guard, bruh. So yeah. I'm, I'm not putting my life. Oh, you, uh, so they was trying to put you unarmed or yeah. armed? No, they was trying to put me armed. You know, they was trying to put me armed okay. down there. But still, even even the armed security guard, you know, if I shoot somebody in self-defense or something like that, it's still some lightweight, serious repercussions coming my way regardless. You see what I'm saying? It's just like it, us. It's just yeah. like us truck drivers. When we get into an accident, we're still up under scrutiny until somebody in the law says that we're clear. You know, because they try to find every little thing. Like if we get into an accident, 
they're going to try and find every little thing to make it our fault so that so that they can, you know, probably, you know, get their client some money or try to clear their client who clearly caused the accident. You know what I'm saying? Let's, let's, let's keep it a whole thousand. They look at us like we're rolling ATMs it's, and we are not. Exactly. Exactly. And and to stay and to stay on that point, uh, you know, as I was saying, that they that they try to look for everything, like, you know, trying to make sure to see if we see if we did our pre trip, see if we're drunk, see if we're high. See, oh, gotta be see, right. See if uh see if we our corrective lenses was in. See if what what we was doing at the time, you know, and, and it is the same thing like you know, being the armed security guard down, you know, for a bank, you got to make sure that the bank was actually getting robbed. Was the was was the teller's life in danger? Was, you know, whatever the case. So I, I, I just told them, I said, hey, look, uh, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm not doing the fifth third account. I was like, I'll, I'll go back and do the rinky dink shit. But you know, and they was like, well, no, we need you there. And if you don't, if you don't want to work there, then we don't need you and all like that. And I was like, okay, cool. All right. Well, I'm not putting my life on the line for no damn $10 an hour. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Other, right. I'll sit Other on my jobs out there. Right. I'll sit on my ass for $10 an hour. I'm not going to stand up all day in uniform. What you know? What what a what a what a sidearm that 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 I if I use it, I could still get in trouble for for ten dollars an hour. I'm not doing that. So, but yeah, man. So you decided to you know get out of security. What what made you get into trucking? What where where did the um where did the idea for trucking come in at? Because that's a far cry from from security to the transportation. Man, I love telling this part of my life story. I got selected because okay my high school and high school I'm very proud of by the way called Youth Build Charter School all over the country I think they have one in Detroit now they might have one in your hometown Cleveland might go under a different name but they're all they're all over the country right because I wasn't the best student in high school and I, I found this school and it was the greatest school experience of my life because these, these teachers actually cared and they taught us a skill we could use. Like they didn't just, they, they had us doing uh construction technology. I was in the technology and uh, they developed a CDL track two years after I graduated and they tapped me to come on board because in high school, I was always known as a kid that was into public transportation, buses, trains, like, I knew all the stats on all the local buses and trains and everything. So that kind of, that recognition in high school kind of led to me becoming a truck driver. Because they was like, all right, he like buses and trains. Maybe he'll like this truck thing. And they asked me about it. And they formed a partnership with the same trucking school uh, back in Philly. They, they formed a, a partnership with them and actually paid for me to go to CDL school. Okay. So that's very fortunate up. with that right there. All right, that's what's up, man. That's 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 tight right there, bro. So, the school actually, you say two years. So, what you graduated in eighteen. So, at what twenty, twenty, they 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 offered you the opportunity. Yeah, I graduated at nineteen. I was twenty one when they uh when they did the partnership with the uh, the CDL program. All right. So, so yeah, I graduated in 07. All right. So awesome. So they, so of course they, so did you have to sign some type of obligation like you do with trucking, like with trucking company, trucking schools that you had to work for a company to pay them back or they just, they, they paid that back on the humble and you was able to go to any, any trucking company that you want? Well, the payment was all taken care of through the school and it's the basic usual thing. When we when we started the class, we had to do um, we had to do a, you know a DOT physical and drug test, right. just like if you were getting a um, a driving job. We had to do that, and then after after we passed, started sitting and doing classroom work for general knowledge. 
They worked on us for about, I would say about two and a half, three weeks on just all the facts of trucking before they took us down to the DMV and had us take uh, general knowledge. Okay, okay, okay. Then after that, after you was able to pass and get your so uh, permit and everything, they took you on the yard and, and did all the all the maneuverabilities, the pre-trip, pro-trip, pro-trip, post-trip, and right. all that other good stuff, would you? And, man, I wish, um, unfortunately, of my, my my three trainers that were there, I wish they were still around. They, uh, they for, unfortunately, passed on. But, uh, man, they would tell you, I... I slept my way through uh, general knowledge in the way I was. So I was still doing security, right? And I was doing a little side gig as a uh, a bouncer on the weekends as well, like 10 to 2 in the morning. Mm -hmm. So by the time 7.30 come around on Monday and it's time for class, I am done. And, like, I thought, I man, I used to always be thinking that, man, I'm going to get in trouble because I can't stay awake. But somehow I retained that knowledge, man. I retained that knowledge, and I was the only person to pass when we went to the DMV wow. for, uh, to get our permit. Dude, is it's, it's Only the, one out of 13. Is the school at this, uh, you know, it was uh, 21. How, how long ago was that, bro? This was back in uh, 2009, early 2009, I went to school. All right, so it's the, do do the school, well, number one, do the school still exist? And number two, do they still got the uh, Trucking Academy program? The school still exists. I'm not sure if that high school, if my high school uh, still has the connection, but they still exist. They're called Smith & Solomon Driver Training. And they're out of Philly. They moved. They moved to a different site. I got to link back up with those guys uh, to figure out, you know, where the new site is. But they're still operating out of. They got, they got one in Philly, uh, Cherry Hill. Uh, what's that? I believe it's Pittston. They they're actually in the side of uh, the Petro in okay. Pittston, PA. Okay. The one seventy eight off eighty one. They're there. Oh, and they got one in Bordentown as well inside that Petro. Okay, okay. That's what's up, man. Bordentown, New Jersey. So they still kicking. They they uh they just had a class graduate uh this week. Okay, that's what's up. Shout out to uh shout out to that trucking school. That's what's up, man. All right, so after you got your uh CDL and everything, uh you you did the damn thing. Let's fast forward up until the time we all met up in the uh, in the in the Zello. So shout out to the uh, King. Well, at the time it was uh, Kings and Queens uh, Trucking Group in right. Zello. Do you still talk to some of them cats in there? Oh yeah, yeah. I'm uh, I'm friends on Facebook with a lot of people, and uh, I occasionally you know talk to some people personally. Um, yeah, I got about five or six favorites I probably talk to pretty often. Okay, okay. All right, that's what's up. Um in in the group, you know, we we had some we we had we had some good times in the group. We also had some controversies in the in the group as well. Uh but the one best thing out of the group that I that you know that I'm going to that I'm going to shout out is uh Stephen B and what he has done for uh, old girl and uh, the late uh, tr uh, young trucker. He, you know, they came. They came in the group. They was looking for. Yeah, they they was looking for, you know, some good trucking information as far as you know owning their trucks, uh, leasing, and everything. And Stephen B took the time to 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 get them right. So shout out, you know, definitely shout out to him for uh, doing that. As young as Stephen B is at that time, he has a wealth of yeah. of, of trucking knowledge that that I definitely uh, would shout out to him, man. So shout out to him. Uh, it's just unfortunate the way that everything in the group sort of went left, but I am still cool with some of the, you know, with. With majority of the people in there, as a matter of fact, a few of them has came on, 
you know, came on the podcast and chopped it up with me. So shout out to those that came on and and uh, talked to me. Um, in the group, at one point, um, you guys, you and Ace, was 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 bigging up uh, one company in particular, Globe Max. What's what's the deal with Globe Max, bruh? Globe Max is a very unique company in that they make it really easy for you to succeed. They don't have a lot of the gimmicks that other, you know, larger companies might have. I'm like, oh, yeah, we, you know, we got this, that, and the third in the truck. No, you're going to get, you're going to get a good basic truck, but they, they really allow you, if you have a goal that you want to hit, they will feed you the miles and the runs to help you hit whatever type of goal you want to hit. And I'm, a lot of people didn't know how to take that because there was a lot of people in the group that came over here. And I'll be honest, they're a little bit. Sometimes the English might not be so perfect. Right. right. And some things get misconstrued. Me, I'm an open type of cat where I can kind of be like, okay, this didn't sound right. Let me give you another shot at saying this so we don't have a problem. You know what I'm saying? Like, mm-hmm. let's communicate. Big on communication. But, yeah, we were um, talking favorably about Globe Max mm-hmm. because if you're trying to hit a goal, you can hit it here. Uh, the equipment is good. And... It is basically your experience is going to depend on you as a driver. So what, their company, they're there, but the way we run is is controlled by you. Where where's Globe Mats uh, located at? Where, where are they out of? They're in Chicago. Oh, damn it, man! But uh, but yeah, you know the classic. <laughs> you know that you know what you hear Black about co- trucking companies in Chicago. I'm here. I'm here to say mm-hmm. that. Don't believe the rumors. Go see for yourself. Now, are there some bad ones, you know, that are maybe that happen to be a certain Eastern, you're from a, a certain, Euro, you know, European country? Mm-hmm. There might be. But it's just like it could be a bad, you know, black company, white company, right. whatever race you want to think of or nationality. One, it's like, what, you know, what do you bring? What are you bringing to the table? Are you bringing good energy? Because mm-hmm. like if I tell you right now, I have been, I have, I have probably quit trucking jobs for petty reasons at, at times. Mm-hmm. But at the end of the day, when I look back on it, my attitude wasn't right. So I can't necessarily blame, blame them. I didn't come correct. Okay. Okay. That's so, what's up, man. So Globe yeah. Max, your, your stint with Globe Max, uh, how long was it before you actually left? I'm still here. Are you still there? I oh. paid off a truck this week. Oh, oh, oh you paid off a truck. Okay, that's what's up. Paid off the truck. Paid off the truck. That's what's up, man. And you yeah. still and you still they, they rocking, actually give you and you still rocking with Globe Max. You get Max. the truck over here. Okay, still okay. rocking for the time being. Uh, some things have personally changed in my life mm-hmm. that uh, are probably going to necessitate me transferring from uh, over the road to uh, you know more of a local type. Uh, local or regional type of deal plus i want to move to a different division right like either use like like i have my tanker and i have my doubles i want to start doing tanker and i i recently did a flatbed load okay i don't know if you probably seen it on the book i did a flatbed load and uh it was it was very much different than i thought it was going to be i liked it kind of getting the flatbed bug a little bit okay okay that's what's so, up all right, so your time, so your time with Globe Max, man. I, I now I don't know if this is true or not, and I'd rather hear it from the horse's mouth. So thank you. But uh, you was teaming with a with a female of the group. Uh, I, inside inside the uh, the trucking group, right? Yes, in well inside the Zello okay. group. I can't remember her name per se but i know she was working for a company called purdy brothers at at that time uh okay if 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 i'm if i'm correct 
in 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 saying that that's her. Now, some some things went down between you and her. You you care to comment about? Because from what I it was from, from it was, what it was rumored. This was the big. This was I'm a I'm a first I'm a first address the rumors and then mm-hmm. I'm gonna bring the reality. There you go. Okay. So the rumors, and I'm not going to use her name because I haven't spoke to her to get permission to use her name. Right. I, but I haven't, I haven't, heard, young I haven't lady, talked to her in, in years as well. So go ahead. Right. So, you know, young lady came on, and uh, the rumors was that me and young lady were supposed to have a relationship. The relationship was nothing but professional, and it was of a teacher nature as I teach her how to drive a manual. She was married, but as right? far as at, she was married at the time, she was right? married. Okay, go ahead. Correct. Yeah, she was married, so there was no extracurricular between me and her. But you know, sometimes when you're in a chat group and things get boring, you know, people like to make stories up. And you know what? I roll with I. I laugh with the story, but I also had heard that it was causing problems in her actual marriage. So at that point, I was like, "Hey, we gotta, we gotta stop the, the fooling, and like, let's keep it real. It was professional, you know. There wasn't any type of that thing going on, and I taught her when she came here to learn. Now, did she like being here at the company? No, because how she wanted to run and how the company was running at that time. The company was big on mileage, trying to maximize the uh, mileage. Their goal for us." as a team, was to hit 6,000 miles a week as a team, which is a good paycheck. At the time, we were getting, I think, um, 60 cent a mile split. So, you know, times that about 6,000. I mean, make sure I got my math for I think that would have been like 1,800 per driver per week. Okay, okay. Not sounded, bad stretch for 2019. Okay, sounded like good money. 60 cent a piece, not split? Like both of y'all getting 60 cent? No, no, no. It was definitely 60% split, but this is, you're also covering 6,000 miles a week. Now, I'm, I might that's, got a couple. That's good Let me know right if there. I got a couple. If you went by the calculator, let me know if I got, you know, if I got a couple zeros crisscross. Well, but, uh, right, right now, I, yeah, can't, we were I, can't, making, I can't rip out a calculator because I'm driving, but okay. I, I, I can imagine, <laughs> I, I can imagine 66,000 miles and and 60 cent, six, zero cent a piece. That's some good money right there, bro. That's some good money right there. So, oh yeah. If that if if that was if that was some good money. Well, let me hold on. Let me prefacize this right quick. For anybody that's thinking about team driving. All right? Team driving is not for the weak. Team driving if at if all. you if you want to team drive, it's always best to team drive with somebody you know and somebody that's on the same page as you now you can't be like oh okay well we're going to team drive for two weeks and then you want to go home and then you know that that's not going to work both of y'all got to be in tandem as far as like look we're going to go ahead knock out this knock out this month we're going to be off for a week Come back, knock out this month. We're going to be off for a week. If y'all not on that type of level right there, then team driving is not going to work for you. All right. So you said it didn't, it was, it was, it was kind of messing with the vibe of everything because what she didn't, she didn't want to run or anything like that. What, what, what was the problem? This was the thing. She will request to be home during the middle of the tour and we had told them, Hey, we're going to run three weeks, be off a week. Cause I was cool with that. I'm that type of, I'm not that type of cat. I still run like that. Now I'm on week four of a tour right now. Okay. So I run like that, but she was trying to be home. We would get, uh, near the state where she resided and she like, Hey, I got to stop in the house. And they're cool. If you're going to like, if, if you kind of in between loads or you got time on a load, where, all right, you want to get a 10 in real quick or you want to go to legit, go to the house, grab something, come back out, 
you know, maybe have a 30 minute break with your significant other if you get what I'm saying. Right. You know what I'm saying? They'll work with you on that. That's sensical, right? Right. They'll work with you. No but problem. yeah, having a whole home time in the middle of a tour, it's like, whoa. What was the point of us? Like, what's like, because I thought you was with it to the point, like, she had, uh, I think, three years in at the time. Right. I had um, close to eight years at the time. Okay. Oh, she wanted to be out there. Now she, in the in the she she was a she she wasn't restricted or anything like that. She can drive a manual, right? I mean, at the, I think she learned on a manual, but those three years were an automatic. Okay, 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 and that's where I came in. That's where I came in. One day we're chatting on the line, like, "All right, you looking for a new company?" And you said you want to learn the manual so you can know it just in case you get a manual truck. At the time, it was like, I would think it was like a 60-40 split mm -hmm. of trucking companies having automatics and manuals. And at this at that time, Globemax was 100% manual. manual. Right now, I think we're kind of 50-50 right now. I'm not sure. But mm -hmm. we definitely got more automatic units over here. But you still, you, your truck is a manual, right? Oh yeah, I got the manual. Okay, 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 okay. That's what's up. How are you gonna come over here? Is it? All right, go ahead, go ahead. <laughs> Traffic troubles. But uh, yeah, yeah man, I right. like I like the manual because it's hell yeah. Um, but yeah, I like I like the manual because I feel like I have more control over the truck with the manual. Plus, mechanically, it's a lot simpler than the automatic. There's no uh, there's no X, X Y shifter to break down. It doesn't need a certain amount of air pressure to run. It's just a solid mechanical gears and oil type of transmission. All right, all right. So now that you now 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 that you flipped over on the owner operator side, man, let's let's uh let's fast forward to present times, man, because you you guys are going through a lot right now i mean with the with the rates the way they are the fuel prices the way they are man are you are you the type of driver are are you the type of driver that say you know just because you know you you're not you know the rates is cheap and everything like that uh you 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 going to sit out are are you that type of driver? Like you, I mean, what what's your bottom line as far as as far as the rate that you'll accept? As far as the rate, it's a it's a couple different things, and I'm gonna shout out Casting Over Roar for this one because he's the one that laid it to me like this: mm -hmm. when you booking the, when you booking a freight, you got to think about where it's picking up, where is it going, what the route going to be, what the commodity is how much that commodity weighs and calculate your fuel burn. You got to know how much truck, you, how much uh, fuel your truck burns. You got to know your idling habits. Mm -hmm. And with that information, you can construct a decent rate. Now, as we all know, last year it was gangbusters, four or $5 a mile freight all day and tomorrow mm -hmm. with $3 fuel, $3 and change fuel. Which fuel was coming up, it was causing me to tighten the belt a little bit, but it wasn't crazy. Once this year hit, that's when we started seeing four or five dollars. Now six fifty a mile. I mean, not a mile, a gallon. So yeah, it's causing me to rethink some things. Because look, I'm just a one truck guy out here. I don't use a bunch of credit. I don't have a lot of connections. So it's making me rethink and want to rebuild my whole business model. So what I'm going to have to do personally, I will have to sit out a little bit, you know, just to just to retool and get ready for this market. Because I'll be honest, I made the classic mistake of not living high off the hog, but I was just used to the freight being what it was and the fuel being what it was. Now with Fuel going up, if rates would have went up, it would have been just kind of like business as usual. But with rates dipping along with the fuel going up, this is a double whammy that I don't know if maybe some of the older cats might have seen this back in the 80s. But since I've been trucking, like I started in 2009. 2009 was pretty bad as far as fuel. Fuel was like 425, 450. 
and rates were about two to three dollars. And then after uh, I would say at the 2012, 2011, kind of fuel kind of dipped down a little more. Rates went up. It was seasonal. Rates went up. Went up in the summertime. They went down a little bit in the winter. But with everything that happened in the last couple of years, any type of economic knowledge that you have from before, it no longer counts. Mm. And definitely it doesn't account for 10% inflation. Thor L. Falcon, man, listen, listen, I, you know, I'm, I'm a company driver and a lot of, and a lot of the times, uh, you know, a lot of the conversations that I have with some people, you know, dips into the owner operation and lease uh, driver side, but some, you know, some feel that, Hey, lockout man is just a company driver. He don't know what he's talking about. He don't know what he do uh, because he's not he's not in that lane. But I, I I tell people that I know owner operators such as yourself. I know lease drivers. That's how I am able to conversate on that because I sit down and listen to what you guys going through. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So I pay it I pay attention to what you guys are going through and taking the information that I'm getting from you guys is the reason why I haven't stepped over the threshold to become an owner operator because it's it, it it's a lot more than just driving a truck for y'all. Right? But in the groups Exactly. In the groups, I mean in the groups I do feel some kind of way when you know when you guys come in there and y'all holler to everybody and y'all say, "Yo, stop driving for cheap freight. Stop driving for cheap freight." And I understand that. I understand that you won't drive for cheap uh for cheap freight. But then there's that new person that just got a new authority that just got a new truck. Let me let me let me say something real quick. And it's a public service announcement. To all those that think being on like being an owner operator is great that you're starting your own business, but it's not. We don't like, and this is me. I'm, I'm speaking for me and the people that I know. We're not high siding on you when we say we go through this and we go through that. Now we're just telling you what it is. It's different than it's different than company driving. You know, it's a lot more things you have to take into account, and. Yeah, the money is a little bigger. The expenses are way bigger than you have as a company driver. So if you got a, if you're a company driver and you you're at a pretty good spot and you're making what you need to make, hey, do your thing. I don't look down on you. I have personal reasons why I wanted to become a uh, owner operator. I wanted to see the other side of the desk because mm-hmm. I did think that. You know, it was a lot more money over here, and it is in a normal market. In a normal market with, you know, $3 fuel, 2 to $3 freight, you can carve out a nice uh, living for yourself. Mm-hmm. We're living in strange times right now, but for those who can, for those who can manage well and get the different types of uh, business credit, and get just keep connections, keep a good attitude. Your best ally in this game is going to be a good attitude and good connection in the open mindset. But because, what, yeah, in the groups, yeah, but what about what guys I, high side? They, they talk smack, yeah, but, what but that's about, not what it's all about out here. But, yeah, but what about what I was saying about you know, about the owner operators telling the new jacks or telling the people not to take. Uh, you know, cheap freight because you know it is it does you know it does something. But is that fair to tell somebody not to take cheap freight, especially if they're trying to build their business up? They're going to try and take whatever they can get, right? All right, hold on. Uh oh, I think you cut out. Hello. Hold on. We sound on my side. Oh, okay. It's on your side. Okay, okay. You are you back? Oh, uh, you got me back. All right. Did did you hear what? Yeah, I I'm, out, I'm out here in the hills of West Virginia. <laughs> I, I heard the gist of what you're saying about the don't haul cheap freight. Yeah. This is what I say. You got to know your numbers. 
No, but listen, I, I was saying is, is it fair for the, you know, for the for the OGs to say, you know, don't don't haul cheap freight to the people that's Absolutely. coming in that's coming into the game. I mean, they they trying to they they trying to get in where they fit in, right? Right? Okay. I say it like this. You either going to listen or you going to learn. Mm-hmm. One of the two things is going to happen. The reason why we say that is because Although not all brokers and shippers are bad, there are some that they are strictly out here to get as much as they can off of that load as they as possible. And you'll see it in the attitude. You'll see it in the rate they offer. I don't pay attention to the rate on the DAT board anymore. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's, it's a good reference point, but I try to beat my costs. Mm-hmm. That's what you you have to do. You have to calculate your costs. Like right now, I put it like this: if I take anything less than three dollars a mile, it better be a four dollar mile load on the back of it, mm-hmm. or or something else, or maybe it's a lighter load. Because I'll I'll try to work with guys. I know some some will tell you, some will tell you, hey, this is what I got in it, and they'll mean it. You know, especially if you t- if you talk to the the same broker multiple times. Mm-hmm. You'll know that what they're telling you is true. But if it's just, you're just your first time calling that company or maybe on the DAT board, they got a little bit of a lower rating. Like if they have a rating less than 80, there's probably some po- problems there. Less than 90, less than 90, you should probably have, you should probably be looking at uh, different people. And that just is what it is. So how do you? But, uh, how, yeah, how, how the OGs new, are right. How would a new How would a new person coming into the game that just got their trucks and trying to, you know, trying to appease everything? How do they? How How would they go by? Uh, you know, finding the right broker to the 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 drive for, or the right broker that 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 would get them the kind of money that they want, instead of being talked into, you know, in the in the freight or into the cheap freight. This is the thing, like, some guys that go out and buy a truck, they've already been talked into a bad situation mm. that they don't know yet is bad for them because the number one priority for me getting into a lease purchase was the price and condition of the truck. Mm-hmm. I didn't want to, I didn't want to pay more than 60 grand for a truck. And I wanted my truck to be fairly late model. I ended up compromising on the year I wanted. I wanted a 16. It was uh, 2020 when I started. I wanted a 16, but I settled on a 14 because I was able to operate that truck as a company driver mm-hmm. before signing for it. And Globe Max, they, they lived up to their word. They told me, look, drive the truck. See how you like it. Anything wrong with it, let us know. We'll fix it. We get it to the point where you like it and we like how you're rolling and we'll sign papers and we're going to give you a fair deal, a fair market deal and fees as low as we can make the fees and and make the deal work for both of us. Now, and as, they have done exactly that. Now, as now at the time you, you was, uh, you know, doing a lease purchase as a lease purchase operator for Globe Mats, are you are you uh, are you still up under their guidelines as far as running the truck? Like, say, for example, if you wanted to run the truck for you know for a different company or go on a DAC board and find some loads for yourself, uh, why you still leased up under Globe Mats? Could you could you do that, or you had to just? Exclusively run their loads at before you got be, well, before well, this you is brought a, this is, for the truck. Okay, this is this is how that works. You have the option of letting the office dispatch you, and you have the option of picking loads off the load board. Now, as far as running under another company's number, you're not able to do that because you're buying the truck from them. The whole, the lease thing is attached, the lease is attached to their authority. Mm -hmm. So, 
being the way that that's set up, it's set up in a way that, yeah, you have to run under their authority, but you have options. You know, you can pick, you can pick off the low board. You can, uh, you can develop a relationship with, with a broker such as, you know, you know, like a TQL or Coyote or, you know, just, just to name a couple of brokers that everybody knows, right? Okay. It can even be a smaller broker. As long as they're approved through the company, they, they do a credit check on all brokers. And that's normal procedure. Your big companies do it too. It's normal procedure just to make sure they're not making deals with somebody that has a habit of not paying after the load is delivered. So that's, you know, that's normal procedure. And, uh, yeah, that, that, that's your options. Now, if people want to, you know, hop to different authorities, they should probably go get a truck from a dealership in which they'll be able to do that. But it's not, functionally, it's not a good idea to keep hopping from authority to authority because you're going to have different rates, different insurances. Like, it's not just like changing a job. It's like you're you're literally, it's kind of like moving, picking up your house and moving it to another state. It's a very tedious process. Mm. So okay. it's it's not a good idea to be hopping authority. All right, you now know? now that the truck is yours, like lock, stock, and barrel, uh, mm -hmm. is is you know your name on the door now and everything. So are you now? able to say like run an Amazon load on your own or something like that now? I mean, if I, if I find an Amazon load, I can get on it. You know, if you find a, a JB hunt, you know, a 360 box load and you, uh, you know, you negotiate and well, you know, I'm, I'm self dispatched and I can make those, I can make those requests to work with those people. You know what I'm saying? I can call and, and, and figure out a deal between me and that, um, that broker and, you know, come up with a, a nice rate that we want to complete the load under. All right. So Thor, you know, we, we know that, you know, that you got your truck and everything lock, stock and barrel, but in your opinion, man, and at this, at this juncture, at this time, is it is it a good time to to get a truck <laughs> to become an owner operator <laughs> at this time? It it depends on what you do. Drive box, I wouldn't recommend it. Just because it pays so much the pays are so much more consistent on, you know, flatbed loads or tanker loads or uh, um Something specialized like that. They pay, they just, and that's good times and bad. It's always going to pay more. So I would say to somebody looking to become an owner operator, learn from a current owner operator of what's going on. Take notes. You know, because this is going to be, whatever this ends up being, this is going to be historic. Take notes on it. If you, if you can float it, and you still want to do it after calculating all your numbers. Calculate all your numbers. Don't just, this is not a thing you just dump into. You're literally changing your life. Whether it's going to be for the best or the worst, it's going to be entirely up to how much work that driver is going to put in to costing everything out. This is a uh, this is 100% mathematical based business right now. All right, all right. All right, before we get on up out of here, and Thor, thank you very much, man, for giving me the time and chopping it up with me on the Lockout Man podcast show. You guys know that the best conversation starts here on the Lockout Man podcast show. Listen, Thor, man, being an owner-operator, owning the truck, operating the truck, doing the damn thing with the truck comes with uh, a lot of freedom. And that freedom is like driving the truck on your own and what i mean by that like a lot of us you know company drivers you know we could pc the truck you know per company guidelines but you being the owner operator of the truck because you know there's another topic of pc it's it's like a little gray area there how is pc for a owner operator like for example can you actually like, 
Can you actually drive the truck as your personal vehicle if you didn't have hours? Like, if you don't have no no loads, no nothing, and you just say, hey, I'm about to go to the movies or something like that, you hop in the truck, start it up, and go to the movies, man. What I mean, how, how would that work out for you guys as far as driving the truck without affecting your hours of service? This as is on, how that works. As under, operator. under, okay, under a load, under a load, absolutely not. Under a load, absolutely not. Without a load, remember how I say everything is mathematical based, right? You do not want to be dry. This is a very expensive car. <laughs> and I say that term loose and I say that term loosely. Exactly. This is a very expensive car to drive around, you know, going just just you know, just taking a little driving trip. Now if you gotta go to the store or something, keep it within reason, keep it less than fifty miles. You know what I'm saying? Um in situations where you have to you have to go home to meet a personal obligation then I would say, do what you got to do. Because you're going to buy that, you're going to have to buy that fuel, right? You do what you got to do. If you got to go home to handle some business or, uh, you know, to make it there for your kids or, or, or something like that and you're not under a load, yeah, you can, you can do that. But you want to keep it within reason because you are smoking fuel right out the stack for free <laughs> when you do that. So you want to keep that under control. Now, I will say this. The carrier will, hey, what's going on? They'll ask. Because they, they want to make sure, number one, the truck ain't being stolen. You know what I'm saying? Like, from you. Like, wow. You know, there's a lot of driving here, right? They're going to ask. Can they legally tell you not to drive it? Only if you're suspected of doing something illegal, then they may get you know, police involved or something like that. But as far as you having to make an executive decision to be home or to do personal travel, which you would, you would notate it in your, um, you know, in that note line, you would notate it and then you can do what you got to do. But I, I got to say this, do not be out here hauling loads on PC unless you have whatever exemption covers you. There's, I know there's an ag exemption right now that lets you do that, you know, for your grain haulers and things like that. But if you if you run in drive box regular freight under PC, please understand, you are taking your license and you are taking your carrier's MC status in your own hands. Mm -hmm. There you that have it. That is a it. big giant no-no with the FC, the FMCSX. There you have it, man. There you have it. Thor L. Falcon was good. Thank you very much, bro. In I really, the I, I, I really, <laughs> I, I enjoyed myself with this one, man. Went back, reminisced a little bit. Talked about, uh, talked about leasing and current events and stuff like that, man. I really do appreciate you coming on, chopping it up with me, man. Hey, don't be no stranger, bro. Definitely, man. I'll poke, I'll poke in there every now and again, you know, because it's a lot of things going on and, you know, it needs to be talked about. And uh, I, I like to give my unique perspective on things. Hey, and I appreciate that perspective, bro. All right, man. All right, guys. Until next time, you know, we'll get back up on the Lockout Men podcast show. I really appreciate you guys listening. Thank you very much for tuning in. Stay tuned for the next episode. Jeez, got it locked, boy. Won't you to take it like a G?